lecture so far what I have argued is that given a periodic potential V x equals V x plus A, where A is the lattice parameter. The wave function has the form psi x and we label it with k equals e raised to i k x a periodic function u k x and this is known as the blocks theorem. Then once we know this general form and let me also write this for 3 dimensions 3D the blocks theorem says that there is a k vector r is going to be equal to e raised to i k dot r u k r where u k r is equal to u k r plus the lattice vector r is periodic with lattice vector minimum being primitive lattice vector. So, it is periodic over that. This was the effect on the wave function. How about the energy? when a particle is moving in a periodic potential. We considered what I call the nearly free electron model. in which v x is weak and therefore, we could apply perturbation theory taking the unperturbed Hamiltonian H 0 to be only the kinetic energy operator and adding to it the weak periodic potential. The potential has the form V x equals summation e raised to i g x v g summed over g from which I can separate the g equals 0 component which is V 0 plus summation e raised to i g x v g g not equal to 0 and you see this g equals 0 component is a constant. So, it just refers to the reference point of the potential and we took this to be 0. In that case when I applied the perturbation theory we found that the first order correction to the energy E 1 was equal to V 0 which is 0 and the second order correction E 2 which is given as summation G not equal to 0 E raised to I K prime X V G E raised to I g x e raised to i k x divided by e k minus e k prime this is second order correction for the kth level. This comes out to be equal to mod v g square over e k minus e k plus g summed over g. This is all fine as long as k and k plus g are not degenerate when k and k plus g levels are degenerate then E 2 k goes to infinity. Our perturbation result does not hold anymore and what we did then is we applied implies degenerate 
perturbation theory should be applied. When we apply degenerate perturbation theory, what we found is that if I have this unperturbed energy curve like this E 0 k equals h cross square k square over 2 m at the points at the Bilwa zone. Let me make two of them. This is pi over a 2 pi over a minus pi over a minus 2 pi over a. This is where E k and E k plus g become degenerate. For example, for k equals pi by a, E k minus 2 pi by a will become degenerate. For k equals 2 pi by a, 2 pi by a minus 4 pi by a will become degenerate. And then what happens is that a gap opens up near the Bilwa zone boundary and therefore energy does not remain continuous anymore, rather it will become something like this. and there is this gap which opens up. So, you have gaps in the energy. So, these are called the gaps in the energy eigenvalues. These energies are not there anymore and we got this by applying degenerate perturbation theory. Let us now look at this result from the point of view of diagonalizing the Hamiltonian with two wave functions only. I will consider a case where k is greater than 0. So, I am considering the case where I am on the right side of k equals 0 and I will consider the wave function psi to be some constant a psi k plus where psi k is understood to be e raised to i k x b psi k plus g. Where now in this case because I am taking k equals 0, k greater than 0, g should be equal to minus 2 pi by a because the degeneracy opens up at k equals pi by a. So, I am mixing these two levels and seeing what the energy would look like. So, let me write it explicitly. I am looking at psi equals a e raised to i k x plus b e raised to i k minus 2 pi by a x. If I now write the Schrodinger equation, then I have h psi equals E psi and I have h is minus h cross square over 2 m d 2 psi over d x square plus summation v g g not equal to 0 e raised to i g x times psi equals E psi. So, let me now apply this to psi and then I am going to have h cross square k square over 2 m e raised to i k x will come with a coefficient a plus h cross square k minus 2 pi by a square over 2 m e raised to i k minus 2 pi by a x come with a coefficient b plus summation g v g e raised to i g plus k x this will come with a coefficient a g is not equal to 0 plus summation g v g e raised to i g plus 
k minus 2 pi by a x this is also g not equal to 0 equals e e raised to i k x with a coefficient a plus e e raised to i k minus 2 pi by a x b. This is the equation that we get for a and b. In this I will equate the coefficients of e raised to i k x on both sides e raised to i k minus 2 pi by a on both sides. So, you can see since g is not equal to 0 I will get g equals minus 2 pi by a here and that will give me the coefficient for k minus 2 pi by a x and I will have g equals 2 pi by a here and that will give me the coefficient for e raised to i k x. So, equating the coefficients of e raised to i k x and e raised to i k minus 2 pi by a x I get h cross square k square over 2 m a minus e a plus b v 2 pi by a equals 0. And for the other equation I get I will write the a part first. So, I am going to get v minus 2 pi by a a plus h cross square k minus 2 pi by a whole square over 2 m b minus e b equals 0. If a and b are to be non-zero, then I should have the determinant of let me write this term as E 0 k and this term as E 0 k plus g. So, that I get E k 0 minus E here I am going to get v g is minus 2 pi by a. So, minus g v g e k plus g 0 minus e determinant should be 0 and that will give me the eigenvalue e. Let us solve this. When I solve this I am going to get e k 0 minus e times e k plus g 0 minus e minus mod v g square is equal to 0. This comes out to be mod v g square because v minus g is equal to v g star and this equation then becomes e square minus e k 0 plus e k plus g 0 e plus e k 0 e k plus g 0 minus mod v g square equals 0. This is a quadratic equation in e. So, the solutions for e are e k 0 plus e k plus g 0 plus or minus square root of e k 0 plus e k plus g 0 square minus 4 e k 0 e k plus g 0 plus 4 mod v g square divided by 2. And therefore, I get two solutions e 1 is equal to e k 0 plus e k plus g 0 divided by 2 plus so I can write 2 here for the lower side plus or minus square root of 
E k 0 minus E k plus G 0 square divided by 4 plus mod V G square. In deriving this I have taken this 2 inside the square root sign and therefore it goes as 1 over 4 and this is what we get. So, what we have is that E 1 or 2 is equal to E k 0 plus E k plus G 0 divided by 2 plus or minus square root of E k 0 minus E k plus G 0 divided by 2 plus mod V G square. Now, since V the potential is weak, V G can be very small is small. Now, take two cases 1 E k 0 minus E k plus G 0 is square is much 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 greater than 4 V G square. In that case I am going to get E 1 or 2 is equal to E k 0 or E k plus G 0 not much different it is like first order perturbation theory where the first order correction was 0 second order correction is small. On the other hand if I take V g square to be much 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 greater than 1 half E k 0 minus E k plus G 0 square that means I am reaching the regime or the points where E k 0 and E k plus G 0 are very close I am reaching near the Bilwa zone then I get E 1 or 2 is equal to E k 0 plus E k plus G 0 divided by 2 plus or minus mod V G precisely the result that we got through degenerate perturbation theory. So, this again tells you that if I have this energy curve near k equals 0 or so the energy remains roughly either E k 0 or E k I will show you how this curve comes later E k plus G 0 and as you approach the build one zone there is a gap that opens up as you approach the build one zone there is a gap that opens up. So, energy curves look like this besides the result we got earlier this we did through two plane waves mixing. Now, for this I had to take g equals minus 2 pi by a when I was going towards the right and I will have to take g equals 2 pi by a this part I did not do, but you can easily see since everything is symmetric you can repeat this calculation. So, I had to take g equals 2 pi by a when I was considering k on this side. Suppose I do not want to do that I do not want to consider which g to take which not to take I will take an expansion where I will take psi to be a mixture of three plane waves e raise to i k x plus b e raise to i k plus 2 pi by a x plus c e raise to i k minus 2 pi by a x. I do not have to now worry whether I am taking g equals plus 2 pi by a minus 2 pi by a and so on and again repeat the same calculation. Now, I have three coefficients. So, I will have an equation for these three coefficients and if we diagonalize the Hamiltonian I will have three equations some coefficient a plus some coefficient b plus some coefficient c three equations like these and for a b c to be non zero the determinant of these coefficients will have to be zero and that will give 
So, these are the coefficients and that gives an equation in E or for E which is a polynomial of order 3 in E and then you will have to calculate the eigenvalues of E through a computer and what you will find and this I will give as an assignment again if I confine myself between k equals pi by a and I will give you a reason why I can confine myself between k equals pi by a and minus pi by a you will find that you will get energy for different k's like this and there will be a band like this. So, you will get 3 eigenvalues for each k because I mix 3 plane waves and you will find a band structure like this. More plane waves I add more the bands you will get and I will do that in the next lecture and you will also see why I am confining myself to minus pi by a to pi by a. So, we conclude in this lecture what I have done is indicated how to get energy eigenvalue as a function of k by mixing appropriate plane waves and these also lead to energy gaps at k equals plus minus pi by a for other case energy in a band is continuous. I will build up on this argument in the next lecture and give a proof based on this plane wave expansion give a proof for the block theorem again.